nominal account says debit all expenses and losses credit all incomes and gains the ownership of the goods with the asset will be transferred immediately on the date of purchase only journal in the books of insolvent purchaser will be asked for 15 marks hello my dear students i am your aj sir faculty department of commerce and management vidyashram first grade college mysuru a temple of excellence my dear students, in today's session, I am going to handle the subject financial accounting 2 for second sem BCom. The chapter is the accounting for installment system session 1. Let's go to the first slide. What do you mean by installment system? The possession as well as ownership of the goods passes from the seller to the buyer immediately on the entering the agreement but the buyer agree to pay the total price in installment is called installment purchase system see in higher purchase system even though the goods transfer from seller to buyer but the ownership will not transfer immediately after the sale or after the transfer of goods from seller to buyer but only after the full payment of installment the higher purchaser will get the ownership of the goods until then he is just considered as a user of the goods but in case of installment, the ownership of the goods with the asset will be transferred immediately on the date of purchase only. The installment seller will pass us ownership of the goods also at a, at a time of sale to the installment purchaser. That, that is the main difference between higher purchase system and installment purchase system. In the installment purchase system, the ownership will transfer at a date of on the date of purchase. In the higher purchase system, the ownership will not transfer on the date of purchase. That is the difference. Next one, what is the feature? It is an agreement between the buyer and seller. So it is an agreement, it is an agreement where the seller will sell the goods and buyer will accept the goods and also ready to pay the installment, whatever the balance amount is there. The buyer is not required to pay the total price of the assets in one lump sum but in a certain number of installments. Say in installment system when you purchase the goods or when you purchase the bike or car any assets you need not to pay the full amount but you can get the installment like 3 years, 7 usually it is 3 years or 5 years or 7 years type of installment will be provided by the installment seller to the buyer. Next one, the buyer gets the possession and ownership of the goods immediately once the signing the agreement. What do you mean by that? On the date of signing the agreement or on the, on the date of purchasing the asset, the with the transfer of the goods, you will get the ownership of the goods also. Next one, in case of default in any payment, if you fails to pay any installment, then the installment, the seller has no right to repossess the goods. In case of the installment purchaser fails to pay any installment, the installment seller has no any rights to reoccupy or repossess the goods. So you can go to the court and you know, file a case against the installment purchaser and also you can follow the court order. But in case of higher sales system or higher purchase system, the seller will be having the right to repossess the goods if in case the purchaser fails to pay the installment. Next one, but he can go to the court and sue the purchaser for unpaid balance. So he can go to the court and file the case against the installment purchaser and also he can follow the court order. Next one, as the purchaser is the owner of the goods, so because the already the purchaser has become owner of the goods once the agreement is signed, he can dispose the goods in any manner he likes. So as the Purchaser is the actual owner of the goods. He can resell the goods or can you no, know, he can use the goods in a, as any manner he wants. Next one, what is the difference between installment system and higher purchase system? Let us see. So, this type of question you can expect for 10 marks in the exam. See if they ask for 5 marks, what are the features of higher purchase system? Write this 7 points for 5 marks. If they ask for difference between higher purchase and installment system so you can write any five five points each you'll get 10 marks you write more than five points so even though you are having you know any other points are missing or any uh, points are written is wrong then you'll get other points will can hold the marks next one what is the main feature or what are the difference between higher purchase and installment system 
it is an agreement of hiring so hiring means using the goods so it is an agreement so until the full payment of the installment the ownership will not be transferred it is considered as the rent for the usage of the goods next one it is an agreement of sale so here the ownership will has not transferred the whatever the amount the installment is paid by the installment purchaser to seller is considered as a rent until full payment of the installment but here whatever the amount he is paying it is considered as a sale and he is repaying the sales amount next one the it is governed by the higher purchase act 1972 so the higher purchase system is a separate act is there so it is governed by the 1972 higher purchase act and it is not governed by any act so it is a just it is a sale of the product so there is no any such kind of act to govern by installment system next one the parties of the contract or agreement are called higher vendor and higher purchaser so there are two parties in higher purchaser and higher seller so first one is the higher purchaser and second one is the higher seller so here there are two parties called buyer and seller so installment purchaser and installment seller next one the ownership of the goods is transferred only making all the payments fully so the until the payment of all the installment the ownership will not be transferred but in the in case of installment the ownership of the goods will transfer once the agreement or once the both the parties come into them come into an agreement next one in case of default the higher vendor can repossess the goods or he can take back the goods in case of installment system so the seller in case of any default of payment from the installment purchaser the seller cannot repossess the goods he has to go to the court next one the relation is the bailor and bailey what do you mean bailor see bailor is the person one who gives the goods for usage bailey is the person one who take the goods for usage so it is a bailor bailey relationship so until the payment of full installments the higher purchaser is just using the goods so once if he if in case he did not pay any installment the higher seller will repossess the goods and the whatever the amount paid by the higher purchaser will be considered as the rent for the usage of the goods next one there is no such relationship just it is a buyer and seller relationship is there so once the product is sold there is no relationship between the installment purchaser and installment seller next one the higher purchaser can terminate the contract but he cannot claim the amount paid see if the higher purchaser cannot pay the full installment he can cancel the contract or he can no give the goods back to the higher seller but whatever the amount he has paid whatever the installment he has paid that cannot be claimed by the amount or that cannot be refunded in the higher purchase system here the buyer cannot terminate the contract and escape from the liability of making the payment of installment so in the installment system the buyer the installment purchaser cannot terminate or cancel the contract in between the contract time this is the format of installment purchase system see this is the journal entries in the books of installment purchaser see we can prepare journal entry in the books of installment purchaser and at the same time journal entries in the books of installment seller again ledger in the books of installment purchaser ledger in the books of installment seller so four types of problems we can do so here journal in the books of installment purchaser will be asked for 15 marks ledger or journal in the books of installment seller will be asked for 10 marks you can expect in the books of purchaser for 15 marks in the books of seller for 10 marks so here this is the journal entries in the books of installment purchaser so installment purchaser prepares installment seller account first one asset account debtor interest suspense account debtor to installment seller installment seller account so what do you mean by that see asset we are purchasing the asset any asset and interest suspense here we have to create separate account called interest suspense because see here this is the sale so actual sale is happening so whatever the amount you interest you pay 
it will be transferred to interest suspense account. So that's why so we have to show interest suspense account should be debited. In case of seller, it should be credited. Asset account retire, interest suspense account retire to installment seller account. I am a installment purchaser. So I am getting the asset. So asset should be debited. So whatever the interest you pay, that should be transferred to interest suspense account. It should be interest suspense should be debited. So total interest, for example, if you having a four installment, so whatever the interest you paid for the four installment, add all the installment and write here. So interest suspense interest suspense account data to installment seller here installment seller is the giver of the goods debit the receiver credit the giver so it is a interest installment seller account is the personal account so here he is giving the goods what you are getting you are getting the goods that's why asset should be debited and installment seller should be credited next one installment seller account data to bank account here we have to Pay the down payment. So when you pay the down payment, who receives the down payment? Debit the receiver. Installment seller is the receiver. And when you pay the check, usually we can write it is bank or cash account. Bank or cash account. But usually we can we will write as a bank account only. So when you pay the check, so who pays the amount? Bank will pay the amount. So bank also personal account. Installment seller also personal account. Installment seller is the receiver of the money bank is the payer of the money so then general entry is debit the receiver credit the giver that's why installment seller account are to bank account next one interest account so we have to show interest is due that should be transferred to interest suspense account there in the higher purchase system interest will be transferred to interest account are to higher seller account but here interest account are to interest suspense account that amount should be transferred to interest suspense account next one installment seller account related to bank account here we have to make the payment for the first installment we have to pay when you pay the amount who is the receiver installment seller is the receiver so who is the when you pay the check who will give the amount bank will give the amount that's why we will write installment seller account related to bank or cash account so cash is a no real account Bank is a personal account. So if you consider it as a cash account, cash account, what real account says, debit what comes in, credit what goes out. So we give the cash to him, it should be credited, credit what goes out. So who is the receiver? Installment seller is the receiver. It is a personal account. What personal account says, debit the receiver. So it should be installment seller should be debited, cash should be credited. If it is bank account, bank also should be credited. Next one. We have to charge the depreciation. At the end of the year, we have to charge the depreciation. So it should be, so which account will charge the depreciation to asset? We have to charge the depreciation. General entry, depreciation account related to asset account being the first year depreciation. Next general entry is profit and loss account related to two interest account, two depreciation. See, in this case, in the for the installment purchaser, whatever the interest is paying is an expenses to him. And also depreciation is a expenses or loss to him. What nominal account says debit all expenses and losses, credit all incomes and gains. So that's why he should transfer this interest, whatever the interest he has paid and also whatever the in depreciation he has charged. Both are loss and expenses to him. That's why he has to transfer that to profit and loss account. So when you write profit and loss account in debit set, it represents loss. When you show the profit and loss account in credit set, it represents the profit here the interest and depreciation is a loss for the installment purchaser so he has to transfer to profit and loss account profit and loss account are to interest account to depreciation amount transfer to profit and loss account next one for the first year we have to show purchase entry okay next one down payment entry third one we have to show interest is due and fourth one we have to show Installment is paid. Fifth one, calculation of depreciation. Sixth one, transfer to profit and loss account. Both interest and depreciation transfer to profit and loss account. But after the first year, only once we'll purchase the asset, isn't it? And only once we make the down payment. On the same day when we purchase the asset, we'll make the down payment. But after the first year, from next year, we should show only we have to pay the interest. We have to pay the installment and we have to charge the depreciation and transfer to profit and loss account. For first year, six entries. What are those? Asset purchase, next one, down payment, third one, installment is due and fourth one, installment is paid, 
fifth one depreciation last one is transfer but from next year we have to show only interest is due only once already asset is purchased already down payment is made remaining entries we have to show so what is the remaining entry we have to show interest is due interest account are to interest suspense account being the second year interest due and next one installment seller account are to bank account bank or cash account being the installment or second year installment paid next one we have to show the depreciation so depreciation account are to asset account being the second year depreciation and last one we have to transfer interest and depreciation to profit and loss account general entry so profit and loss account are two interest account to depreciation account here again for the next year if, if in case they will ask for four installment we have to pay for four years three installment we have to pay for three years we have to show the entries also for three years again for next year start from interest is due and also second one installment is paid third one charge in depreciation fourth one transfer to profit and loss account so what is the first entry first entry for purchasing the asset first year first entry asset purchased on the base of installment system who is the giver here installment seller now what is the first year entry first year entry is asset account debtor interest suspense account debtor to installment seller account next year we have to show the down payment what is the down payment when you pay the down payment who is the receiver installment seller so installment seller account debtor to cash or bank account for third year we have to show interest is due general entry so interest account debtor to interest suspense account next year we have to show the payment of first installment general entry installment seller account debtor to cash or bank account fourth year we have to show the depreciation depreciation account debtor to asset account and last year we have to show the both depreciation and interest will be transferred to profit and loss account general entry profit and loss account debtor to interest account to depreciation account this six entry for first year from next year we have to show only interest is due only once we'll purchase the asset only we'll make the down payment from second year no purchase entry no down payment entry only we have to start from interest is due general entry interest account debtor to interest suspense account and for next one pay the installment second year installment general entry installment account debtor to bank or cash account next one we have to make the depreciation depreciation account debtor to asset account last year depreciation and interest transfer to profit and loss account so my dear students from next session we are going to start the problem on journal entries in the books of higher purchaser till then thank you so much see you in the next class